As you'd be aware, this afternoon, the independent member for Frankston has made some comments about his future uh, decisions. Let me assure you and let me assure all Victorians, I as Premier and this government will not be held to ransom by Mr Shaw. We will continue to govern in the best interests of all Victorians. We will continue to pursue our budget in the Parliament. We will continue to make sure that our budget, which is a great budget for Victoria, is passed through the Parliament and enables, on the 1st of July, our police, nurses, doctors and teachers to continue to be paid, our hospitals and schools to operate and to deliver the outcomes our budget promises for the people of Victoria. This afternoon, I spoke to Mr Shaw. Mr Shaw put what were unreasonable demands on me as Premier, on the government and on the people of Victoria. I will not be held to ransom by those demands. I will not accede to unreasonable demands. And this government will continue to govern in the best interests of the people of Victoria. It is now up to Mr Andrews, as the Leader of the Opposition, as to whether he wishes to do a deal with the rogue MP from Frankston, Mr Shaw, whether he wants to accept the vote of Mr Shaw and how he wishes to proceed. That is fairly and squarely in the court of Mr Andrews and the Labor Party. And let's not forget that Mr Andrews only in the past 12 months has said he will never accept the so-called tainted vote of the member for Frankston. So the issue now lies with Mr Andrews is will he team up with Mr Shaw and what action will he take from here? From our perspective, we will continue to govern in the best interests of Victoria. We will continue to pursue the policies that we believe deliver to the people of Victoria the services they need, the infrastructure they demand to make sure that our growing state, our growing economy and our growing community has the services and the infrastructure they need. Any questions? Mr Shaw uh, made demands today that I provide an absolute assurance to him that the parliament would not seek to sanction him further with respect to the Privileges Committee. I cannot be held to ransom for those sort of outrageous demands. From time to time, Mr Shaw has made other demands of the government, which we have not acceded to. And an example of one of those demands was Mr Shaw has previously and again has made demands recently for a particular judicial appointment. That is outrageous, that is extreme, that is ludicrous, that is not tolerated by me as Premier and it would not be tolerated by the people of Victoria. And we say no to Mr Shaw, we say no to his outrageous demands and we will not be held to ransom by Mr Shaw and his antics. Will you or can you expel or suspend Mr Shaw from the Parliament and would that therefore break this deadlock? That is a decision for the Parliament and it's not for me as Premier to preempt any decisions of the Parliament. Have you spoken with the Governor uh, at all over the past 24 hours or will you be doing so tomorrow? Talk about the as well? yeah. I, I spoke to the Governor in uh, recent times. It's one of the reasons we're a little bit later for this press conference. And uh, I spoke to him this evening and uh, advised him of the uh, uh, commentary made by Mr Shaw this afternoon and assured him that we have 44 members of the coalition in the Legislative Assembly. Uh, Labor have 43 and there is one independent. So we have the largest number of members 
in the Legislative Assembly in Victoria. And what did the Governor say to you? The, government, the Governor listened to me and it's not for me to uh, talk about our conversations. No, that's not appropriate. He did advise me that he had a uh, well-planned meeting uh, with the Leader of the Opposition that had been set two weeks ago. It was not a meeting in relation particularly to this occasion or this issue. Yes, it is. It, 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 and governors often meet with both the Premier, the opposition leader and the leader of the National Party uh, on a semi-regular basis. Would and this meeting, the governor assured me, was arranged with Mr Andrews two you weeks ago. Well, he met... Well, this meeting, the governor assured me, and I, the governor said this meeting was arranged two weeks ago, and he said he'd met with him six months earlier. The governor often meets... Well, well, he meets occasionally with occasionally, him. Yeah. him. Yeah. So but this was. But but this the point of the the point of the matter is, Brendan, is this meeting was arranged two weeks ago. It was not a meeting in relation. No, it's and it's and it's not appropriate. No, it's not appropriate for me to ask that. Have you received any advice on what would happen if a successful motion? Well, that's that's hypothetical. The only way that any such motion could be introduced to the Victorian Parliament is if Mr Andrews does a deal with Mr Shaw. But surely you as Premier know what would happen if that, if that motion was passed? Well, we, we would have to renew our knowledge of that issue. Is this now a race for one side to get rid of the other first? Because you have, of course, Ken Smith saying he'll side with Labor to get rid of Jeff Shaw, and now Jeff Shaw is saying he'll side with Labor to get rid of you. <laughs> well, well I, I think we'll uh, see what happens as it unfolds. But let me tell you and tell the people of Victoria, I, as Premier, will not be held to ransom by some rogue MP from Frankston. Would you support Labor's uh, move to have find Jeff Shaw in contempt of Parliament if they bring him up quick? Well, we don't know what Labor proposes to do. That's well, up to Mr Andrews. Would you support finding him well, uh, well, that's that's hypothetical questions. Some people have been looking at your government tonight saying you're calling a news conference at 7 o'clock the government may be in crisis and wondering why are you continuing to hold on? We didn't have a four-year election terms. Well, we, 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 have in our, election we, we have in the constitution drawn up by the previous Labor government under Mr Brax a fixed four-year term. Is that the only reason why you're not calling an election? Well, if I could call an election uh, six months ago or 12 months ago, I would have been very tempted to call it. But under our constitution, written by the Labor Party, and I must say at the time criticised by the coalition as not being flexible enough, um, we have a fixed four-year term. So and, the, and the Premier cannot call an election at his or her whim. So, in a sense, would you like Jeff Shaw to have a confidence Well, so we, we have a great budget uh, for the people of Victoria. We have a strong platform of achievement and we would be very confident of putting that to the people of Victoria. Premier, how will you rule if Jeff Shaw abstains from voting or votes with Labor? You'll only have 43 on the floor. So you'll be matched by, by, by Labor and if he doesn't vote or vote with Labor, you'll be defeated. And the casting vote of the Speaker should go with tradition, which is status quo. So what happens then? How do you get stuff Well, the status quo is the government continues. Well, how do you get stuff up so you want to change the status quo? Well, these are all hypothetical questions. And that's the system. Well, we, we've seen the system operate over the last few uh, weeks and months, ever since I've been Premier. The uh, Mr Shaw has been an independent member, and he has voted according to his own whims and wishes. Who was the judicial appointment that he approached you about? Oh, I can't comment on that. I, don't, I didn't even, don't even know the name that he uh, approached about. Uh, and I said, no way known, no way known that I, as Premier... Which could do that. That is ridiculous. And when was that? Well, he has made demands over uh, some time. Would you, you refer that to IBAC, Premier? Or... Oh, well, at the time it was so ridiculous. It was, it was so ridiculous and it was never going to be acceded to. So, no, but the it, request should be referred to. Well, you know, it was, it was an independent member making what I thought was a ludicrous request. But suggesting that the government's survival depended mm -hmm. on some. No, he didn't. He, he asked. He asked that, and it, I just thought it was such a ludicrous request. Did you refer it to the anti-corruption body? No, I didn't. Would you? Oh, I, I guess it's such a. It, it is a ludicrous request that the government wouldn't countenance. But shouldn't it be referred to investigation by the anti-corruption body? 
Well, I you know. But, but, it, but the person that requesting it has no authority or power. They're an independent single member of the... Well, well it, it, I have, um, from time to time, people making suggestions to me about who should be appointed to a number of things. Well, and then we said, no way, no. It's just ridiculous, ridiculous request. Given his request, do you think he is fit to remain in Parliament? Well, I think that's up to the people of Frankston and uh, perhaps the people of the Parliament. Have you spoken to Ken Smith about whether he will go ahead with his threat to join Labor in expelling Jeff Dawson? I've spoken to Ken Smith a couple of times and uh, made my views very clear to him about what I uh, think uh, has been his comments recently. Um, uh, but, you know, again, these are hypothetical things about what may or may not happen in the Parliament. He's supporting you coming on, say, in August, rather than... Well, these are very hypothetical things. What have he said, though? Well, uh, he hasn't given me a, a chronology of what he expects. I've spoken to him in general terms. Will you now look to have this dealt with by next week? Please? Well, this, this is um, not a matter that's up front in my mind at the moment. Did you ask Ken Smith to back away from his stance before speaking to Mr Trump? What I said to Mr Smith, it will be a private matter between myself and Mr Smith, but I was full and frank in my comments with Mr Smith. Do you regret perhaps not dealing with Jeff Short earlier and do you think that this issue has dragged on so long that it's you know, inevitably come but to an we, we continue to recognise that Mr Shaw is a, an elected Member of Parliament. Uh, he had some issues raised that were referred to the Privileges Committee. The Privileges Committee operate independently of the government and uh, uh, they have reported only recently. So I don't think there's any sense that issues could have been brought forward or dealt with in a different way. From your conversation with the Governor tonight, um, was he concerned about the situation and did he call you or did you call him? I, I rang the Governor. And was he concerned about the situation at the moment? I wish to inform the Governor and uh, and indeed, uh, no, I, I better not comment on the comments, uh, the, the conversation. No. <laughs> <laughs> have, you spoke, have you spoken to Mr Shaw since he made his views clear this afternoon? No, I spoke to him at about 20 to 2 this afternoon uh, and it was a, about a 15 minute conversation and that's when he made certain demands which uh, there's no way that I will be held to ransom by those demands. No way will I accede to those demands that are unreasonable and uh, inappropriate. Abortion law, abortion law on one of those demands? I, cannot, I don't think he did raise abortion in that conversation this afternoon. Did he, did he call you today? I rang him. No, so, uh, well, to, to put it in context, he, he sent me a text message uh, on Monday night. Uh, I tried to ring him Monday night, uh, and uh, I also rang Mr. tried to ring Mr Smith on Monday night and left messages on both their phones. I spoke to Mr Smith this morning, and uh, uh, my office arranged for me to ring uh, Mr Shaw this afternoon. And did he tell you this afternoon that he would no longer support the government? No. So you, you had well, that sorry, he, he indicated that that was one of his considerations. So you, you had that confirmed in a radio interview? In a radio interview, yes. Well, I said, said before. <laughs> 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 well, to give your government supply. He's suggesting he doesn't have confidence... Well, that's up to Mr Shaw. That's up to Mr Shaw. But I would say to both Mr Shaw and Mr Andrews that this is a good budget. This is a budget that's in the best interests of the people of Victoria and it will guarantee that our schools and hospitals are open, our teachers, nurses and police are paid as of the 1st of July. I think that there is a priority for the, all of the Parliament to pass a budget. Premier, there is the prospect that Mr Andrews refuses to do a deal in your words with Mr Shaw, but when the matter's put to the vote on the floor of the Parliament, telling members of Parliament vote, well, as I would understand it, it would need Mr Andrews to actually move the motion if he had a deal with Mr Shaw. So uh, uh, that would be, that would be uh, highly improbable because he hasn't done it for the past 18 months. So why would he suddenly do it without doing a deal with Mr Shaw? So, so you know, I, th uh, I, th I think... The, the ball is now fairly and squarely in the court of Daniel Andrews. What deal is he going to do with Mr Shaw? What deal is he doing 
with the rogue member for Frankston. So if you make the no deal, then you still end up where you don't want to go with a vote of no confidence on the floor of the parliament. Well, the, the ball is in the court of Mr Andrews. Is he doing a deal with Mr Shaw? But isn't that the problem here? Is there now a perception that it is up to Labor to decide the future of... No, no, it isn't. We are the government and we are governing. We have got a budget before the parliament and we intend to pursue that budget. What we would hope is that the Labor Party recognise the merits of that budget, recognise the importance of that budget to the people of Victoria and support the passage of the budget. I would be extremely surprised if the Labor Party vote to block supply. That would be an extraordinary decision given the history of the Labor Party in Westminster parliaments. Well, I'll seek advice on that. Well, we felt as Premier and Deputy Premier this was an issue that was best dealt by the Premier and Deputy Premier. Do you think the issue of four-year terms in the Constitution needs to be revisited now? I said at the time, I, I think, and, I, I, and I'm, not, I'm not sure whether it's on the Hansard record or, the, or not, but I, I think my recollection is I said at the time that uh, I thought the, the rewritten budget... Uh, Constitution was uh, written in haste and didn't have appropriate uh, flexibility and even uh, took away reserve powers for the Governor. And I think some of those things are things that um, uh, perhaps mean our Constitution isn't as good as it should be. And indeed, what's now is a situation, uh, to the best of my recollection, is many of those provisions within the, budget, uh, within the Constitution are also now entrenched, or what's described as entrenched, so they can't be changed by a simple majority in both houses, or even a two-thirds majority in both houses. They have to go to a plebiscite of the Victorian public at enormous expense.